Commission may please. At this time, we shall offer evidence in support of specification 47, paragraph 1, otherwise uh, known as the Fort Santiago cases. We shall call the first witness, Padre de Tavera. Joaquin Pardo de Tavera, 61 years of age, Filipino. Uh, sir, in this connection, I desire to announce that I may have to speak a little louder than usual because the witness is somewhat hard of hearing. What's your, what's your present position? Chief of the Division of Investigation of the Philippine Commonwealth. Since when? Were you the chief of the investigation division of the Philippine Commonwealth? Since 1938, up to the time of the Japanese occupation. Did you have any contact with members of the Japanese army? Never. Uh, in uh, March 1942, where were you? I was at my home. Do you know of any happening that uh, disturb your peace at the time? Yes. At about half past six or a quarter to seven on March 2nd, 1942, some Japanese entered my room at uh, Calle M.H. del Pilar, 914. Pulled me out of bed where I was with Mrs. Tavera and without giving me time to do anything except put on hasty clothes, took me to Fort Santiago. All right. The defense, if they can understand, all right. Then they used to revive me, put me up, and give me the same treatment. They gave me that treatment for about four or five times, and every time I asked why, and the answer was, you know very well, and they kept on beating. After a certain time, a certain Sergeant Imai, I recall his name and his face very well, took some kind of, uh, well, a black check, cleverly made of a steel coil with a big lump of lead at the end, and he beat me with that for about 15 minutes until I again collapsed. Because that coil, when he gives the swinging movement, wraps itself around you like a snake. And wherever that lead hits you, well, you'll remember it all your life. I was black and blue from the top of my head to my heels. And still, I didn't know why I was arrested. Will you proceed? Then I was taken down to that cell and uh, attached on my chest some kind of uh, paper with bits of wire and Japanese characters on it. And according to a Chinese prisoner who was in the cells and knew also a little bit of Japanese, he told me that it said, no food, no water, and a severe penalty. Were you given any food or any water? For eight days, no, sir. Kindly proceed. The following day, they took me up and uh, they tied me a rope around my neck, going to my belt. My heels were tied together, pulled to my uh, waist behind and Tightly. So I was there on my knees, sitting, uh, squatting, and I was a heavy fellow because I weighed about 180 when I entered Fort Santiago. And in that position, I was investigated. 
Whenever my answer did not please the Japanese, I got the usual treatment. Few slaps, was hit with a piece of wood, about a piece of wood about that size. I think it was one of the leftover bars of a cell that we are building. Uh, may we uh, put in the record the fact that uh, the witness indicated the piece of wood which uh, would be about uh, two and a half by two and a half uh, inches. Oh, yes. They hit me with that piece of wood in the back of my head, on the side of the, of the head, that's why I had lost my hearing on the left side. And another occasion, while I was on the floor also, because they never investigated me except squatting on the floor, tied up, they hit me so severely that they broke my nose. They, start, they tried to stop the bleeding by inserting plugs made of cardboard into my nose. And when that failed, they took me back to the cell. That same afternoon, I was taken up again to a room beside the, the library. And under tables that were used by the Americans to keep their maps, their military maps, tables that are very low. I was chained like a dog. They didn't even allow my belly to rest on the floor. Every time that I sagged, and I was a heavy man and tired, without food, without water, they kicked me with the military boots on the side of my body. Could you proceed, please? On many occasions, on another occasion... Uh, just a minute. While you were being kicked this way under these uh, tables, were there any other people present? I couldn't see anybody, but I heard them talking with two persons whom later on turned out to be two agents of the division. Which division? Division of Investigation. Go ahead, please. And very clearly, I heard the following words uttered by their interpreter. Mr. Well, I don't remember the name. Oh, I haven't got a very good memory for Japanese names or faces. Go ahead, please. I heard him say, look at your chief there under the table. He's not a human being anymore. He is an animal. He's sentenced to death. So anything that you may say against him cannot hurt him anymore. Then I was taken down again and placed in the cell, and the Calvary started all over again. They would leave me alone for a few days, then they would come and take me back and take me up and take me down, slap me around, beat me. One day they called me, they sat me in a very nice chair, and the same sort of email, with a diagram of how I was going to be executed on the Lunata. How I was be executed on the Lunata. He made a drawing showing the different places of the planet by permanent Filipino and Japanese people where I was going to be myself. Then he placed in front of me a chair containing ice cubes a package of American cigarettes, and matches, and left me alone. When he came back about four to my, uh, half an hour later, maybe, he asked me why I didn't drink the water or smoke the cigarettes. Of course, I am not a damn fool anymore. I know the Japanese methods, and I didn't go touch it as well. I have been without water for a long time. Then he asked me if I had anything else I wanted to say before being executed. And I thought, well, that is very nice. I believe that if you notify the TVT, which was the famous newspaper of the execution, 
It would be a very nice movie to take as a souvenir. Then I got a hell of a beating. Excuse me. What's the TVT? TVT used to be the official organ of the Japanese at the time. Uh, newspaper, you know? Yes. Chain of newspapers? Yes. Was a jujitsu ever applied to you? Jujitsu? Yes. They tried judo on me two or three times, but without any results, because I know jujitsu and judo, and I know how to fall down without being hurt. Was any damage done to your thumb? Yes. In what uh, way? On one occasion, they got hold of my hand, started asking questions, and as I wouldn't answer, they put up this thumb until it snapped. <laughs>